In this video, you will learn how ColdFusion connects to the database. You will also establish the connection between the ColdFusion server and the database that you will use for the exercises of this course. When developing a dynamic website, you will need to send queries to your database. So ColdFusion needs to send queries to the backend database. These queries are sent through a database connector. Now, these connectors are provided by the database vendors. So each type, each brand of database engine has its very own special connector. Now, ColdFusion comes pre-installed with lots of different connectors. So ColdFusion can access the most popular database engines right out of the box. And anyway, it is easy to add an extra connector to ColdFusion if the one you need is not pre-installed. Also, these queries must be written in a very specific language called the SQL, and that stands for Structured Query Language, and we will learn some of that SQL later in the course and later in this chapter. Now, when connecting to the database, keep a few things in mind. First of all, a single ColdFusion server can host multiple ColdFusion applications, and some of those applications may need to connect to for example, a MySQL server, but other applications hosted on the same ColdFusion server may need to connect to an Oracle database or to a Microsoft SQL database. So a single instance of ColdFusion must be able to connect to different brands of database engines at the same time. Also keep in mind that a single database server can host multiple databases for different websites, for example. Some of those databases are used by ColdFusion applications and other databases hosted on the same database server may be used by other technologies such as PHP or even something else. So when connecting to the database, ColdFusion needs several pieces of information. ColdFusion needs to know the address of the database server. Is it the MySQL server? Is it the Oracle server? Is it the Microsoft SQL server? And if it is a MySQL server, which server is it? Because ColdFusion can connect to several different MySQL servers, of course. ColdFusion also needs to know what database to query on that server, because a single database server can host multiple databases, of course. And ColdFusion, of course, needs to know the username and the password to access that database on the database server, because database servers use username and passwords to secure databases and to make sure that you do not access the data of another user. Of course, ColdFusion also needs the actual SQL statement, the actual question that you want to send to the database. Now, most websites use a single database. So all those three pieces of information here will always be the same in a single website. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule, but most of the time this is true. So the address of the database server, the database to query on the server, and the username and password will be always the same, regardless of the SQL statement that you sent to the database. So ColdFusion has come up with this idea, and they define what is called a DSN, a data source name. And the data source name in ColdFusion is simply a little file that stores the address of the database server, the database to query on that server, and the username and password to access that database, and a few more pieces of information. So when connecting to a database, ColdFusion take that DSN, that data source name, it takes the SQL statement that you want to send to the database and it mixes both to create a request to the database. In other words, before we are able to connect to the database and to query the database to retrieve data from that database, we need to go to the ColdFusion administrator and define our DSN or data source name. So let's return to the ColdFusion administrator to create that DSN, that data source name. So I log on to the ColdFusion administrator, and I will go on the side here to that data sources page here. And here you have a list of all the DSN, all the data source names that are already defined in that ColdFusion instance. Notice that this list is the same as the list that you've seen in the RDS panel of ColdFusion Builder. Notice also here the HD Street final DSN, which is already defined in ColdFusion. And you have defined this DSN earlier in this course when you ran the setup.cfm page to set up the final version of the exercise that we toured 
together earlier in this course. So now we will create a new data source name, a new DSN for the CF training site. So let's give it a name. I will name it HD Street. And now I have to choose a valid driver type. So here you have the list of all the connectors that come pre-installed with Cold Fusion. You see, you may recognize here most of the database vendors, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, and so on. The one that we will use is the Apache Derby Embedded Database. So let's select this connector and let's add the DSN by clicking on the Add button. Now here I have to provide some information to that DSN and the information to provide depends on the connector that you have chosen on the previous page. So if you connect to a MySQL database, you may not have the very same form here. The only thing I have to provide here for the Apache Derby embedded database is the database folder. So let's browse the server. And on the server, I go to my applications folder here on my Mac, but it can be, of course, the program files folder on Windows. I go to my ColdFusion builder, to the ColdFusion server, to CFusion. I go to the web root of ColdFusion, where my CF training folder is located. And inside of that CF training folder, I have this database folder that contains all the database. So I click on OK. I select that database folder and click on OK. All right. And then I submit here this new DSN. And you see that ColdFusion checks if it can connect to the DSN. And you see the status is OK. So here for the HD Street DSN, I can indeed connect to that database. Now let's make another test. For example, let's choose here a Microsoft SQL Server. And in this case, you see that the form is a little different. You need to provide the name of the database, the name of the server, and of course the username and the password to access that database on that server, which was not mandatory for the Apache Derby embedded type. So let's cancel this and log out of the Cold Fusion administrator. We are now ready to query the database and to retrieve data from that database to publish on our website.